It's summer! In the northern hemisphere, at least. But here, that means it's time for beaching, time for being outside, and time for getting that tan on. Of course, summer also means heat. You know, here it's not too bad, but in, in other places it can be quite brutal. And in fact, it can be pretty tough to be even inside without air conditioning. But what do you do if you don't have air conditioning? Well, maybe refrigerators can help. They keep your food cold when you open them up, you can feel the cool air coming from inside. Certainly they've got to be a secret way to keep your house cool. A life hack that all those fools with air conditioning don't know about. You can cool your house with a refrigerator, right? Wrong! But let me explain. Temperature isn't probably what you think it is. Not at least the scientific way that we think about temperature. If you open up your refrigerator or your front door in the winter, you can think of it as letting the cold in, maybe. But thermodynamically speaking, there's no such thing as cold. Sure, by name, cold is used all over science, but it's a relative term. It's always got to be compared to something that's hot. That kind of relativity... Get out of here, Einstein! No one's talking about you! Isn't helpful here. Temperature, as defined by scientists, is this. But that's not important right now, let's just do it in words. Roughly, temperature can sort of be thought of as akin to energy. So an object that's warmer has more energy than an object that's colder. On the macroscopic level, we can stop there. Temperature equals energy. But let's go further. Everything that you might assign a temperature to, the air, coffee, yourself, is all made up of a bunch of molecules. In liquids and gases, like coffee or air, those molecules move around freely, and in solids, while they're bound in place, they're still able to vibrate. So when we're looking at temperature, the energy we consider is the energy of motion, or kinetic energy. So something that's hotter is going to have its molecules moving around a lot faster than something that's colder. But again, that's all relative. The coffee in this mug, compared to a lake, is going to be moving around very quickly, but compared to lava, it's going to be super slow. Now, let's think about what happens when things of different temperatures come into contact. When I grabbed this cup, it was room temperature, but when I poured the coffee into it, it started to heat up. The coffee had just been made, and it was pretty hot, so the molecules inside the coffee were moving around quite quickly. When those molecules came in contact with the molecules of the cup, they started smashing into it, transferring energy over to the cup molecules. Those cup molecules started vibrating faster, and the cup heated up. But because of one of the most important ideas in all of physics, the conservation of energy, the coffee molecules have to slow down as well. So the cup heats up and the coffee cools down. If I let this sit for long enough, the cup and the coffee will become the same temperature, as the both of them want to be in equilibrium. So let's get back to refrigerators. Let's say we start with a refrigerator where the inside is the same temperature as the outside and we want to cool the inside down. That means we want these inside air molecules to move slower than they are now. But remember, thanks to the conservation of energy, that means that molecules elsewhere are going to have to move faster. It turns out, actually, that those molecules are the sides of the refrigerator. If you feel the sides or back of your own refrigerator, you'll notice that it's kind of hot. That's because, to conserve energy, your refrigerator actually pumps heat from the inside outwards to cool things down. To step back and look at this with a bit of abstraction, refrigerators work roughly like this, taking heat from a cold reservoir and moving it to a hot one. This process doesn't happen naturally, though. If things are in equilibrium, they're going to want to stay that way. So refrigerators have to do work, or expend energy, to run. So, here's the kicker. Refrigerators don't move heat from inside to out without side effects. To power the pump that transfers the heat, you need energy in the form of electricity, and some of that energy is transformed into extra heat during the pumping process. So if I plug this in and had the door open like this, heat from the air in the room would move inside the refrigerator, and then the pump would try to push it out the back. But because you get extra heat during the pumping process, instead of cooling down, the room would actually heat up instead. Now, the other option would be to build a refrigerator big enough for you to live inside so you could just shut the door and all the heat would be pumped away from you. But then you'd basically have a house with air conditioning and would probably be better off just buying an AC unit instead. And when you got that AC unit installed, you'd have to put it in a place where it was sticking outside. 
Have you ever wondered why AC units have to be partly outside? It's because, essentially, they turn houses into giant refrigerators. And what better place to put the heat than back outside from where it came from? Thanks for watching.